Hello everybody and welcome back. As always, I am Mateo311 and this is your channel for everything VR related. Today, we have over 50 of the best free VR games to go over and this includes titles from the Quest 2, Pico 4, and PC VR. I've organized them by genre so you can find exactly what you're looking for and I've added plenty of new titles and even a few new categories from last year's version of this video. Now there are of course the links and timestamps if you want to skip ahead but before we jump in, this video is brought to you by my sponsor Kiwi Design. They currently make my favorite Quest 2 Elite Chap which comes comes in multiple different versions. You can add an extra battery pack, high quality headphones, or even both. They also have other products like Valve Index style hand straps, and they just introduced a brand new RGB stand. Your controllers and headset magnetically connect. There's a charging indicator so you'll know when your headset's ready to go. And there's plenty of different RGB color options available. There's a link to Kiwi Design down in the description. And don't forget to use discount code Mateo311 for 5% off and to help support this channel. Okay, so let's start this video off with some casual titles, and first up is Bait. If you're looking for a chill fishing experience, well then you're gonna wanna check out Bait. This is an early title from Resolution Games, a studio with a phenomenal reputation in the VR industry, and here you'll just get to chill out, relax, catch some fish, and buy some new fishing equipment. So if you have any interest in virtually catching fish, go check out Bait. But if you prefer something to get you moving a bit more, we have the poor man's Beat Saber, Moon Rider. Moon Rider is a browser-based rhythm title with an excellent selection of songs. As a web-based application, there is no download. All you need to do is go to moonrider.xyz in your Oculus browser or from your PC and you'll get a fairly well done Beat Saber clone with over 15,000 songs to choose from. This application is primarily intended to show off the capabilities of WebXR and they absolutely nailed it here. Now if you want to add an anime girl to your rhythm titles, we have Kazuna AI Touch the Beat. Now not exactly a Beat Saber clone because you're not slicing these blocks, but rather tapping them in a dance-like motion. Now it definitely has its own Hello? sense of style, but unfortunately though, there's only two free songs. And then after that, you're gonna have to buy a song pack. But maybe it's more your personal style than Beat Saber is, so it's worth checking out. Now, since my last video, you guys made a lot of recommendations that I've started checking out. And the first one up is No Clip VR. No Clip VR is a multiplayer title with unique levels, multiple puzzles, and unique entities. Now do your best to stay out of the back rooms, where the world is overly yellow filled with fluorescent lighting, an obnoxious hum permeates the entire world, and worst of all, something stalking you. Now if that's a bit too spooky, you could chill out in the shopping tale to Elkin. This is a casual hidden object title that'll have you exploring a cute little miniature world. You're tasked with finding various items that are hidden inside buildings, behind trees, and stuffed in containers. This game was just made as a prototype for a much larger title, but it's still worth checking out. Just like our next title, The Trials of Tatooine. It's a brief experience that has you hanging out with R2-D2 while defending the Millennium Falcon with your trusty lightsaber. Graphically, it's some of the best Star Wars out there, but unfortunately, it's just a short little experience. And speaking of cool experiences, we have Elixir. This is a hand tracking demo that puts you in the role of apprentice mage. You'll be experimenting with dangerous contraptions, accidentally augmenting your physiology, and most likely dying along the way. So if you're looking for a fun, quirky experience to test out hand tracking, I highly recommend you download this game. Okay, so let's move into our next category, VR experiences. Now this has been requested multiple times before, and these are things like short films and virtual environments that you can explore. First on the list is Mission ISS. Have you ever wanted to explore the International Space Station and peek out a window and see Earth down below? Well, now you can. You'll get to learn how to move around and work in zero gravity, and real-life NASA astronauts will guide you through the space station. This is basically what virtual reality was made for, the ability to be transported to another place that you would never get the opportunity to otherwise. Now, if traveling the space is still too grounded for you, our next experience is a mind-bending animation that explores the limits of reality with a story that focuses on schizophrenia and online gaming communities. It's a wild ride to say the least, narrated by the Sorcerer Supreme herself, Tilda Swinton. Now, exploring schizophrenia most likely isn't for everyone, but VR can truly impact your emotions, and that's what our next experience, Liminal, sets out to do. Liminal features multiple VR environments designed to elicit different emotional states, such as calm, energy, pain relief, and even awe. It's a great showcase for VR, and you might find yourself just tinkering around in this experience a lot longer than you expected. Now, next up, we have two amazing animated short films from Baobab Studios, a group that's already produced some amazing VR content. Anytime I check out one of their short films, all I can think about is how amazing anime would be in VR. Now, on their list of free films, we have Invasion and Crow the Legend. 
legend. Now, personally, I love Bonfire, but that experience is not free. It's listed for $4.99, but go check out these films. You won't be disappointed. And our final VR experience is Trip, a wellness application focusing on guided meditation and breathing techniques that has you exploring some beautiful worlds. Now, it's cool just to check out in its own regard, separating it from the mental health benefits. But if you do find this to be a beneficial application, there is a $4.99 monthly subscription service that'll give you more access to content and tools. But I'm sure you guys didn't come here for virtual experiences, so let's jump into one of the most popular genres, first-person shooters. At the top of my list still remains Pavlov Shack, which is basically Counter-Strike in VR, and there may come a point in time where it's no longer free on the Quest 2, but until then, I highly recommend you jump into this game and experience some of the best shooter action that's available in VR. It doesn't go full-on sim like Onward, nor is it arcade like population one and for me personally it strikes the perfect balance and of course it's free so why not just go check it out now if you prefer an arena shooter we have hyper dash this was a paid title for quite some time that recently went free to play and i absolutely love it it's extremely fast paced allowing you to do these short little teleportation hops you could also rail glide plus there's plenty of different game modes in-game weapons to pick up and unlockable cosmetics I highly recommend this game, even if the sci-fi style of shooter is not your style, because it just works so well in VR. Now, the same studio is also working on a 5v5 Rainbow Six Siege style of game. You'll select a unique loadout filled with tools that'll either help you defend the location or breach it. It's currently in open alpha, and I highly recommend you check it out. Another shooter still in development is Hacks. You'll have to battle sentient robots with an array of different weapons and tools at your disposal. Graphically, it reminds me a little bit of Sweet Surrender, but they also have a multiplayer mode in the works. Now, if you prefer roguelite shooters, we have Super Raft Boat VR. You'll be battling a wide array of sea creatures while trying to build out your raft. It's cute, colorful, and there's a surprising amount of strategy here. If you enjoy the gameplay loop, there's plenty of replayability. And if you're competitive, try to make your way to the top spot on the leaderboard. Now, another colorful shooter is Cactus Cowboy Plants at War. This is a cartoon version of World War II that has cacti battling it out against bugs. Now, I'm not exactly sure why they went with that design choice, but the game will have you storming beaches, mounting turrets, and enduring slow motion explosions. So if you need something different, here it is. But if you prefer online PVP, we have Gun Raiders. If you prefer some chaotic action with your standard array of multiplayer modes, Gun Raiders hits that sweet spot. There's a large array of weapons, including melee ones, four different gameplay modes, and battle passes with cosmetics if that's your style. When it comes to PvP shooters in VR, there's a lot to choose from, but almost none are free, so Gun Raiders is worth jumping into and checking out. But if you're not interested in playing online, a wave shooter that you have to check out, especially if you like horror games, is Propagation VR. Excellent graphics, spooky as hell, and absolutely worth jumping into if you're looking for something to play and if you truly enjoy it you could pay for the co-op version and pull your friend in okay so this game actually carries over into our next category which is horror titles propagation vr is spooky enough to remain on this list but since i just spoke about it let's move on to our next title which is dagon by hp lovecraft this is a 3d narrative experience that lets you experience the cthulhu mythos this is a 30-minute adaptation of the original Dagon story, and it currently has nearly 10,000 overwhelmingly positive reviews on Steam. So it doesn't matter if you're a huge Lovecraftian fan or completely new to it, this should be an amazing experience. Now, if you prefer your horror a bit more shallow and just want some jump scares, we have Polar Dread. This is basically a knockoff Five Nights at Freddy's. So if you want more gameplay like that, or you're not willing to spend any money, this is the experience for you. Personally, I can't handle jump scares in VR, and this is an absolute nightmare, but to each their own. Now, if you prefer a horror puzzle title, we have Nervrosa Prelude. This is a fully room scale title, so don't worry about teleportation or motion sickness. There's no jump scares, so that's a big check for me. And just immerse yourself in this dark, creepy atmosphere. Use your hands to solve some puzzles and try not to die. Now, another room scale horror title that's worth checking out is Shattered Lights. It's a highly immersive and truly creepy experience that constantly reshapes your room scale environment, making you feel like you're not traversing the same square over and over again. If the main attributes you're looking for in a horror title is atmosphere and immersion, Shattered Lights truly shines. You see what I did there? Now this game is gonna carry us right into our next category, and that is room scale titles. 
These are titles where the only form of locomotion you use is your actual feet. No teleporting and no thumbstick free locomotion. Now, while Shattered Lights does this well, Traversal does it even better with some non-Euclidean geometry. This is when a 3D world doesn't follow the rules of reality, environments overlap onto one another, and a small doorway could be a portal into a whole new world. This works fantastically well in VR, and Traversal does a great job of showing it off, featuring a hub of different environments for you to travel through. Now, if you want more of a game in your non-Euclidean experience, we have T for God. This is a roguelite shooter set in a robot infested world that takes advantage of non Euclidean geometry better than anything else, opening up into an amazingly vast world to experience. It's been in development for years and it has come such a long way. So if you've played it in the past, I recommend jumping back in. Now, another unique title definitely worth checking out is Dungeon Maker VR. This allows you to transform your real life living space into a trap infested world. It's like taking the childhood game, The Floor is Lava, to a whole new level. And it's also a great example of what can be made with the AR pass through mode. But maybe you just prefer to be more social in VR, and there are plenty of options for that. Basically, all of the social applications are free, so I will lump them all together and just highlight what makes each one special. First on the list is Rec Room, which has more emphasis on gaming. It features plenty of in house developed content like Paintball, Laser Tag, Quest, Rec Roy and even a racing rally. Plus, it also features tons of user-generated content. But overall, this title is more gaming-centric, or rather social app with a purpose, than some of the other contenders. Next up is every furry's favorite social application, VR Chat. Even with the recent backlash for their usage of anti-cheat technology, it still remains one of the most popular social applications, and there are countless experiences to try or people to meet. In fact, HBO even recently made a documentary on this game called We Met in VR. Now, one of the newer social app players is Neos VR. Advocates for this application will talk about how it's much more robust and powerful than VR chat, and I tend to agree, but it still doesn't have that same player base. Now, inside of Neos VR, I even took part of the Meta Movie, which is an interactive role-playing movie experience with actual voice actors. To date, it's one of the coolest things I've ever done in VR, and would love to see more of this happen. Okay, so let's move into racing games. Not a huge list to choose from here, but first up, we have V Speedway. It's a single-player racing game with both time attack and free ride modes. There's competitive leaderboards, if that's your style. And this is a very arcadey style racing title. There's separate comfort options if you get motion sick and realistic wheel, handbrake, and shift your controls. Now, if you're looking for something like Mario Kart, we have touring carts. Hop into a go-kart, pick up some power-ups, and take out your enemies. You guys know the Mario Kart formula. Now, there are four different views for those of you who suffer from motion sickness, and there's 22 separate tracks and 30 customizable cars. I just think you might have trouble finding people playing online. But with these next titles, you should have no trouble finding people online, and we're moving into the competitive category. Let's start by keeping it casual and work our way up the competitive list. So first up is Gym Class. If you just want to hop into a virtual space and shoot some hoops with your friends, gym class is where it's at. Now, eventually this will be a full title as they have recently raised a lot of money, and that's mainly because the title shows a lot of promise. So jump in now while it's still free and check this one out. But something more my style is Poker Stars VR. If you're a big poker fan and want to jump in for some virtual games, here you go. The game now features authentic poker, blackjack, roulette, and even some slot machines. It's also become a bit of a social hub, and there are plenty of cosmetic options. Now, a card game that I prefer even more is Cards and Tankards. If you're a fan of Magic the Gathering or Yu-Gi-Oh, Cards and Tankards will be your VR go-to. I truly enjoy this title. They're constantly adding new content. It's highly strategic and competitive with a great community supporting it. I recently did a spotlight video on Cards and Tankards to help promote this game. And as someone who never previously played any trading card games, I found this easy to pick up and quite addictive. But that's most likely not enough action for everybody or nearly not competitive enough. So next up is Echo VR. Echo VR is like a combination between Frisbee golf and rugby while floating around in space. It's easy to learn the basics, but very hard to master. And they're always pumping out new season passes and cosmetics for this game, helping to keep it as addictive as possible. Now, another ultra competitive free to play game is Ultimax. Ultimax is like a robot rocket league where instead of using cars, you get to make your custom mech and you'll shoot the ball with rocket hands. It features both 1v1 and 2v2 modes. And if you're not super competitive, this title is currently in season two and has already added a lot of updates, including a more casual mode. But if you like 1v1 competition, another title from Resolution Games, Blast On, has recently gone free to play. You'll unlock and build out a custom arsenal, randomly pick up these weapons as they spawn in game, and then strategically use them to eliminate your enemy. It's an absolute blast to play, and dodging all those bullets can be quite a workout. 
Okay, let's move on to the next genre, which should take us all of 30 seconds to cover, and that's MMOs. Technically, VR does not have any free MMOs. Orbis VR used to let you play until level 20 for free, but I am not seeing that option anymore. Now you can still get a Township Tale for free on PC VR, but for the Quest users, it's $9.99. If you're interested in resource gathering and item crafting, it's definitely worth checking out. It's more of an MMO light than your traditional MMO, but it's still pretty damn cool. Now what else is cool is some free sim games. Now it might be a bit of a stretch to call this next title a sim, but Aircar has you flying around a futuristic city, and it's just a gorgeous experience that I highly recommend. There's not much game or content to be had here, but I still recommend you check it out. Now, this wouldn't be my recommendation for users new to VR, but you could jump on some roller coasters for free in Epic Roller Coasters. I'll definitely put a motion sickness warning here because it can be pretty rough for most users, but if you have an iron stomach, it is a lot of fun. There's a few different free tracks, and if you enjoy the game, you can buy some more. Now, if you want to crank up the action even more, we have DCS World. This digital combat simulator will have you engaging in intense aerial combat. There's a ton of different weapons and campaign missions to try, and there's both hardcore realistic and casual gameplay modes. And in a very similar fashion, we also have War Thunder. It's less on the simulation side compared to DCS, so experiment with both of these games and see which one works best for you. Okay, so let's move on to the next genre, and that is action-adventure titles. Now, a surprise title that recently went free to play is The Republic from the studio Camouflage that recently gave us the amazing title Iron Man VR. The Republic is a stealth-based action game that explores what happens when government surveillance goes too far. Now, this game was originally developed for flat screen, so it's a lot more story-driven than we typically get. And since stealth titles are underrepresented in VR, this might be exactly what you're looking for. Something else that might be right up your alley is the fan-made version of Attack on Titan. Now, this will have to do until we get the release of the official title, but for free, it's definitely not too shabby. You'll be swinging through trees or city landscapes, engaging giant titans, and giving them a nice slice and dice. Fans of the series who have fast-paced action should definitely enjoy this one. Or you could get plenty more action from Battle Talent. The first one is Battle Talent, which is a fantasy melee title that plays a bit like Blade and Sorcery. So instead of just hacking up human-style characters, you'll be fighting creatures. There's also an emphasis on physics and traps, and this title even supports mods. So if you like that sandbox blade and sauce reaction, definitely check this one out too. Now the next title is still in its infancy, but is a fun little experience, and that's a very Potter VR game. If you ever wanted to travel to Hogwarts and engage in some magic shenanigans, now's your chance. Explore the castle, cast some spells, and play some Quidditch. So far, it's really cool, and I'm just waiting for them to add more to this title. Okay, moving into the next genre, we have some mini games. The Lab from Valve is just so much better. It's not just one mini game, but a whole collection of them. There's an excellent archery based wave shooter. You get to pet a robot dog and see some cool environments. You'll meet Gladys up close and personal, and I really enjoy the spaceship shooter, but there's more mini games than the ones that I just named. If you have access to PC VR and you've never tried the Lab, you are truly missing out. Now, another fun collection of mini games is the NVIDIA VR Funhouse. It's basically like being at a carnival experience, and it does a great job of simulating physics, and it's a decent way to showcase VR, but it's not as good as the lab. Okay, so we have made it past the games, and we are now into creativity apps. If you were interested in making 3D models, we have Gravity Sketch. Designing in VR takes things to a whole new level, as you can actively bring items to your face, or even resize the whole world around you. It's amazing what people have designed in these environments, and the same goes for Open Brush. Now, Open Brush is more focused on artwork rather than 3D modeling, but that doesn't mean you're not still making 3D objects. I've been absolutely blown away by what people are able to create, and this becomes artwork that you could physically move through. Now, if you're interested in using VR to get some work done, there's some great productivity apps out there. My first recommendation is Immerse, which will give you your own virtual office that connects to your PC and gives you additional floating screens. Working in VR might not be for everybody, but it's worth giving it a try. Now, if you just want some access to your PC and a virtual Virtual space to hang, I highly recommend Virtual Desktop. Not only does it provide the features I just listed, it also does a great job of wirelessly streaming your PC VR games to your Quest 2 or Pico 4. But if you're not the creative type and are just looking for some entertainment, there are plenty of VR entertainment apps. Definitely go pick up the normal stuff like Netflix and Amazon Prime, because having your own little personal theater and when you go away on vacation, you don't have to worry about losing access to your favorite shows. 
Now, if you want to make your viewing experience more social, we have Big Screen. Big Screen not only allows you to share your personal content with your friends, but also allows you to go to the virtual movie theater. That's right. You can buy a ticket, sit down in a virtual theater and collectively take in the experience. I've personally used Big Screen many times in the past just to hang out with some friends and watch some TV. And it's even a cool way to meet some new people. Now, if you rather explore the world, you have to check out Google Earth VR. There's just something crazy about instantly being able to transport across the world and zoom into any place at any time. Google Earth doesn't sound like something that would be very exciting, but go ahead and try it in VR and then you'll know what I'm talking about. Now, there's not much more to say about that app, but I do have some final notes on this video. For starters, I put this out every four to six months, trying to keep the list pretty fresh and remove and add new titles as they come along. But I'm sure I missed some great options and even some whole genres. So let me know what they were down in the comments. And that was today's video brought to you by my dad, Mateo311. If you enjoyed it, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you're new here, consider subscribing. Consider, su consider subscribing. And consider subscribing. Consider subscribing. Consider subscribing. <laughs> 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 we'll see you guys on next time we'll see you guys on next time